think it'll also be really fun to go over things like the heart, the stomach, the digestive system, excuse me, the kidneys, and so on. To actually go into all the systems. So I want to keep going. I want to go nuts with brains. It'll be awesome. How do eyes work? But then we get to things like skin. There's at least a whole chapter on skin in here. And bones, which are not even touched on in our Campbell book which I, I'm sure are fascinating. Also, they keep me standing up, so I want them to keep working. I don't know the usefulness of them necessarily. Tissues are a big thing in this textbook. I don't know if we need it. And of course, always optional reproduction. We're just talking about this. So I am not gonna talk human reproductive organs with impressionable high schoolers, unless everyone in the room agrees that they're comfortable talking about it. We need to be able to say penis and vagina, without giggling too much. Are we okay with this? Hands up if yes. All right, cool. Reproduction is on. Okay. Second thing. Last time I taught this, we had a student who loved plant biology. So we spent half the time doing plant biology with only four students. Who here is interested in plant biology? we got one hand. All right. So how do we feel about like a third to a quarter, somewhere in there, of the time with plants? I mean, we still like need to get the plant hormones. We need to figure out how plants develop and grow and all of that. That comes up on you, Sipo, right? It'll help us. Also, it's weird. The more you study plants, the more interesting they get. So like, give them a chance. If you hate them, we can change our minds and switch to something else. All right. Finally. I think of these as a combination, the primary literature and the techniques that are used by scientists. Now, I'm getting some nods. Who, who likes to learn this? This is good. This is useful. It's useful. It's useful. Um, who here thinks they'll be doing an internship in a lab over the next three years at some point? Possibly doing some research. We hope if we can get in. Nobody? <laughs> Who wants to be a doctor or a scientist? Okay. Who just loves biology? <laughs> All right, got it. So these are mm, okay. So these are super super useful. But I'm seeing overall, even though they're useful, you guys are not like super crazy about. Them. So I already planned today's lesson, I'm sorry, we're reading them. But for next week's and the weeks after, we can emphasize physiology and plants a bit more than we emphasize literature. All right? Can you do it like slightly more techniques? Techniques do show up a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who is here because they're committed to use of them? Maybe, yeah, okay, got it. So yeah, so if we're thinking Yusubo is definitely a thing, then we got to learn this stuff used for Yusubo. Okay, today we're doing blood. We are learning what a primary article looks like and how we should read it. And we will <coughs> learn the techniques Mrs. Webster used to get her master's degree, right? Because those are the ones I know the best, right? Those include techniques that are really frequently tested and really frequently done in labs. So how do you use antibodies? How do you do a Western blot? How do you do all those things, right? Those are useful, those come up. Um, you know what? I have another funny thing I'll show you over the break. For now, this is hilarious enough, right? Like, I love the fact that somebody found fossilized vomit and as a result had to do math about how fast vomit would fall and with what force would it hit a little running away dinosaur. <laughs> okay, theropod victims. So um, let's start with how we should read a primary article, right? The problem with courting a cylindrical object how does an amorous male snake determine which end is which? <sighs> All
papers are going to begin with a summary or an abstract. Usually, scientists read that and then stop. Because that is going to tell the scientists, do I even want to read anything else? That said, the abstract never gives you any real idea as to whether the experiments were good experiments and whether the data is useful data. You cannot judge an article by what its writers claim to have discovered in the abstract. This is their claims. The paper is the reality, right? Okay. Then we got the intro. In the intro, they should at some point tell you why this is valuable and important to study. Why do we care about the habits of amorous male snakes? Uh, let's see. Right. Does this author, in his two paragraph long introduction, explain to us why this is important? And does the author explain to us why this is confusing and worthy of research? <coughs> Last sentence of the first paragraph. Understanding the nature of these cues and the ways in which they are used to overcome particular problems may clarify the function of specific male behaviors and help to explain the high levels of diversity in male reproductive tactics. That is his argument as to why this research is useful. Understanding how these snakes do it will give us more insight into the male mind and male behavior choices throughout the animal kingdom. Okay. And then he should also, or they, I don't know, he, she, they, Shina, Connor, and Mason, they should also be telling us exactly what they're going to research in their introduction. And we can see that at the end of their introspection. I and I, I. How does the male snake orient so he faces in the same direction as his partner? Why does the male snake, snake press his chin firmly against the female as he moves his head along her body during courtship? Okay? Those are their main two questions. They will somehow answer these. Next, methods. Methods must tell you what they're doing, where they're doing, when they're doing, why. Though sometimes they don't explain the why very well. And most people skip the method section. They just skip it. They don't read it. We will go back to it if we need to. We're going to treat it like the science section of the ACT. You know, you do the questions and then you check the, no, no. Okay, you first see if you have a question about it and then you read it if you have a question about it. Okay. We skip ahead <coughs> to the results. By reading the results, we should be able to figure out the methods they used, right? Okay. Are we interested in the results? Do you want to look at this? Let's take a look at just that very first direction of movement because there's a lot of weird numbers in there and I want to make sure you guys know how to interpret them. Males use information on the direction of a female's movement to determine which way they should align. When dead females were pulled backwards, all males aligned in the direct in the correct orientation. In contrast, females dragged backwards, uh, they were corded in the wrong way around. All right. Uh, let's just. Do you see this thing? I'll ask you to do this a couple times for me later. Okay. Thank you. I know it's a job you really look forward to. Mm -hmm. So what can we figure out about their technique? Dead female, which therefore cannot give pheromones, and cause it to move in either direction and see if the males are using direction to orient. Right? In the parentheses, though, it writes n equals 29. From context, what's n? Number of trials. Number of trials. If this was about mice, it would be the number of mice. 
and they even tell you what kind of statistical technique they used, a binomial test against a null of 50% correct orientation. So they're doing chi-square, you guys. You remember? So like, expected 50-50, right? Um, observed, whatever, whatever. Well, if they did 29 trials, what's 50% of 29? And about 14.5, right? But they actually got 29.0, right? Then they do the chi-square, and they get a p-value, right? They, they, they decide what p-value they're using, and they're saying for a p-value of less than 0 0.001, their chi-square was still better than the critical value. So it was very, very significant, right? In contrast, females dragged backwards, blah, 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 were courted the wrong way in 11 out of 25 trials. So 44%. Okay, so here their p-value is 0 0.35. But compare that to when they're going in the right direction, they're like, oh, come on, guys, this is pretty reasonably significant. Okay, and then they compare the two results using a contingency table analysis. Cool? All right. Well, let's look at this next page right here where they have the graph. <coughs> One way many readers read these types of papers is they will only look at the figures. They will, because we're scientists and we don't have any time, just look at the figure and the figure explanation. So, we see in part A, direction of female movement, part B, freshness of exercised female skin, oh god, C, immobile female, E, female sprayed with oocyte, which then you'd look in the methods to figure out what oocyte ties, right? Female without head or tail, female washed with hexane. Okay. <sighs> But you know that all scientists have to like pass an ethics review board before they can do the experiment. I bet if we read the methods section, they'll be like, oh.